you know, it seems like they really pull out all the stops for these Captain Marvel trailers. Now, before I get into uh, kind of my thoughts on the trailer for the Marvels that just came out uh, earlier this morning, uh, I didn't get a chance to see it like when it, right when it first came out and you know everybody was reacting and everything. Uh, well, it's here later in the evening and I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on this trailer now before i get into that i feel like i've got to preface this a little bit you can go back uh, on my channel and check out all my thoughts about the captain marvel movie and everything back then um thoughts before you know i uh when, when i was still ignorant to who the character really was the character of carol danvers who is ms marvel uh, if you ask me, and, you know, was premiered, you know, to, to me as Captain Marvel. I think at that point, I probably only read a couple of comic books of hers that were somewhat the current iteration. Um, I don't think I read any of the Kelly Sue DeConnick stuff. I think most of it was the Kelly Thompson stuff. And there was the life of Captain Marvel comic too. So at the time, I was uh, relatively ignorant to who the character was, what she was all about, her history, or anything like that. And I'll tell you just honestly you don't have to go watch all those trailers i watched those trailers i enjoyed the trailers they actually got me pretty hyped to see the movie now as i said at the time i didn't know much about the character i went and watched the movie and came out you know like hey i thought the movie was okay i thought it was pretty good and even after um after afterward uh this was around the time that i actually found a uh, young rip of five nines channel was uh he was one of the people out there talking about the movie a little bit unlike a lot of other people were talking about the captain marvel movie where a lot of people were mostly just upset and reeing because uh brie larson and something that she said in uh women in films conference you know where they got a bunch of women uh sitting around and they're all trying to church each other up and uh make them feel a little bit better about themselves and hey I'd, there's nothing wrong with that you got kind of this women's empowerment thing they're all there making each other feel better giving them themselves a little pat on the back hey that's cool. Do do what you do, but she's in this kind of event, and this is what this is really what upset a lot of people uh, more so than anything. I, like I gotta be honest with like, and can you be honest with me? Like, what, what, was it what Bree said that upset you more so than the movie itself? Because I, I even stand on the grounds, and this is something I've actually talked about uh, on Twitter and actually uh, triggered some people over uh, is the fact that. The Captain Marvel movie, I think, is better than probably just about anything, almost anything that's come out in Phase 4. I think it's better than No Way Home, and that's what really pisses people off, because, you know, everybody loves their Spider-Man so much that they had to just go watch this, uh, I can't remember how long the movie was, I watched it like a couple times at the theater, I, I don't think I've watched it at all at home since it's come out on, um, on, on DVD, uh, Blu-ray, whatever, you know what I mean. Uh, I don't think I've watched it at all, but you know why? Because the movie is pretty, it's not memorable. It's its just a bunch of mishmash fan service with some cool shit that happens in between. But like, and but I do stand by that. I thought the Captain Marvel movie was pretty good. I watched it just, you know, uh, maybe a month ago, two months ago. It wasn't too long ago. And I watched it, I'm like, the movie's not that bad. It's not that bad, especially considering where you see where the MCU at, is at currently. And, you know, I watch it. And, but even even without the Phase 4, I enjoyed it back then. Like I said, go, go back and watch my videos if you want to. But one of the things that, I mean, I did kind of uh, come wise on after that, like I said, found Eric July's channel, and I seen he was saying something a little bit different about the character and who the character was and how they messed up so many different things in this movie. And I gotta say, I feel the same way at this point now that, yeah, they trashed a lot of the characters' uh, origins and everything in the movie. I think a lot of that is easily, uh, could easily be fixed as in the first movie there's uh so many details of things that they didn't give us any clue about uh her past or family anything like that so like there's a lot of stuff they could go in and fill a whole bunch of gaps and be like okay and completely change everything that we know about the character and maybe even uh people would say retcon some things but i would say the things i have in mind wouldn't necessarily be retconning it'd just be filling in those gaps of things we don't know about the character now however 
having known uh, what the character, who the character is now. I bought, uh, I read through the whole original run of Ms. Marvel, which is who Carol Danvers was before she, uh, the current iteration when Kelly Sue DeConnick relaunched the character, I guess Marvel, but Kelly Sue DeConnick was the writer at the time, uh, kind of relaunched the character into Captain Marvel. She took the mantle, mantle, she took the title of Captain Marvel, who uh, was originally actually belonged to uh, Marvel. Then there was obviously Monica Rambeau, who went by Captain Marvel as well. And she ended up, uh, she premiered in like a Spider Man comic book. Uh, you know, I, I can't remember what issue. I, I'm sure somebody probably knows better than I do. I'm not going to pretend to know shit that I don't know, okay? So, I mean, there, there's a whole lot of stuff that they kind of skipped over going into that movie. Again, my nitpicks aren't with that. I thought the movie itself for what they're doing, what they did in the MCU, I think, I think it's all right. I will watch it now. And I'm like, yeah, it's still, it's still an okay movie. I'm not going to say it's great or anything like that. I'm not going to die on that hill. Like, it's okay. If you're going to argue with me about it's terrible, it sucks, and it's woke and all this bullshit, you're going to argue with yourself because I, I, like, I'm just saying the movie, I enjoyed it. I can still watch it and enjoy it. And that's not to say it's a good film. That's not to say it's a bad film. I'm sure there's plenty of bad movies out there that I enjoy. But all that aside, taking into consideration what they've done in the MCU with his character and everything, um, I, you know, I've, I'm, I'm okay with the character, except for some of the stuff they did after, like the end game thing. And the, I don't know, just you know. And here's the thing: is like I understand a lot of people, you know, are going to be turned off. We're turned off from the last movie. They're not going to be. They're going to be turned off from this movie. Uh, they probably all cheered and everything when she got punched in the face by Thanos. And hey, I cheered too. But the point being is that there's people who are already not going to like this movie. It wasn't made for them. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. But, but, I mean, really, I mean, all movies should be kind of for everybody. Anyway, regardless, most people aren't going to like this movie and all this stuff are against it because Brie Larson and what she said in this woman in films thing. And it was really just, and, you know, and the, and the thing is, I've talked about it, like, it's, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And what she said isn't wrong. It's not wrong, and it's kind of how you say it. I mean, does she care what some 40-year-old white dude thinks about a wrinkle in time? Probably not. And the thing is, is like she said, it wasn't made for him. But, the, the I mean, that was kind of, all the, I mean, if you really just think about that, I mean, I think the point stands pretty good. Uh, it probably means more and is going to be enjoyed by somebody uh, who is more the, the target demographic than somebody like, say, myself. I haven't seen a wrinkle in time. I can't speak to those kinds of things. But I think what she's trying to say, what she was saying, is that people uh, should be reviewing uh, some of these certain movies. Now, that, that comes down to like critics and all that kind of stuff. And that's a wholly different story for somebody else to cover. I mean, plenty of people review these movies. Uh, they just don't have that seat at the table of the critics, right? Well, I mean, that's something you got to work to any, uh, to get there, to be amongst all these critics that people uh, look up to and think, oh, hey, this person's credible, and they got some something real to say, and, you know, stuff like that. Like, there is no Siskel and Eberts anymore, okay? So, the thing is, now, getting beyond all of that, I thought the movie was okay. Now, we've got this new trailer that just dropped today. And, uh, spoiler alert before I get into everything else. I thought the trailer was pretty good. It was just like they did with the first Captain Marvel trailers. Like, they sold the movie. They sold me on the movie. They made it entertaining. They got a, a good soundtrack for it playing in the background. I mean, uh, you know, you got how, how, is, how is it not going to pop when you've got intergalactic planetary playing in the background while you've got um, Kamala Khan? Yeah, I said her name first. Uh, you've got Monica Rambeau and Carol Danvers all there, you know, fighting and kind of going through the sequences. And though, like, it was an ex it was a pretty exciting trailer. It's not uh, that bad at all. But getting into uh, everything else that goes along with that is kind of where everybody else is going to be at. Now, me personally, uh, in case you guys don't know, haven't paid attention, uh, since the Ms. Marvel show premiered on Disney+, Plus, like, it's probably one of my favorite shows they've done on the Disney+, Plus, and it's not the best show that they've ever done or anything like that. I mean, I think it's probably the best, uh, most consistent and well-put-together show they've done, but to me, the reason I really enjoyed it is uh, a couple of things. Uh, that was, for one, Iman Villani, who I think was, like, really good playing 
Kamala Khan. I think she embodies the character really well. I thought her attitude was very good when I would see, uh, when I would watch the show. She's there on screen. She's got her family, all her friends, everything going on. She put a smile on my face, you know, made me feel good. Like, yeah, hey, I'm looking forward to the next week. And if you hear her in interviews and things like that, um, what she said is, I, I think this young lady is probably a great ambassador for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I've said this numerous times uh, since RDJ is pretty much gone and they don't have uh, that person at this point. I think that she uh, could be somebody that they could really uh, look into and lean on for uh, stuff like that. Because uh, she obviously knows her stuff. She's a, uh, a fan of the things that they've got going on as well. So, I, I mean, I think, I think she's great. If we could take a look at Tiana Paris, a uh, beautiful young woman. She's coming in playing Monica Rambeau. I thought she did pretty good in the WandaVision series. And uh, I think, obviously, she's going to be one of the big characters in this movie. If we could get down to Brie Larson. Brie Larson, I'm not one of those people that hates her. I follow her Instagram. I follow her YouTube. I don't watch all her stuff. I don't watch all her posts and everything like that. But... The, I mean, she, look, I mean, she just, she just lived, trying to live her best life, you know, you know, I know, like, somebody's gonna talk about, you know, there, those interviews she did where she's being a butthead with Don Cheadle and uh, Chris Hemsworth, and she's being, hey, uh, where it seems like she's being bitchy, or then you see uh, just other things uh, with her, like, I get people don't like her and her attitude and everything, hey, I'm not gonna fault you for that, I'm not saying that I necessarily like her and all her attitude, everything. to me, she, to me, she's mildly annoying, all right, she's mildly annoying. Um, but I also don't like think she's ugly or unattractive or anything like that. I mean, I think she's a decent looking, I think she's a decent looking woman. She looks pretty good. And of course, like I said, I mean, a lot of people aren't going to like her automatically because of what she said before anyway. But I think that she actually really does embody the character of Captain Marvel, the current iteration of Captain Marvel in the comics. Um, the whole, basically when they relaunched her as Captain Marvel, she embodies that character like, like so perfectly that I would almost say that she is, uh, probably the most comic accurate character that we see on screen from comics to film. 100%. Argue with me all you want down in the comments section. But I think she embodies the character pretty good. I think all three of these, uh, all, all three of these young ladies uh, embody these characters that they are playing uh, in this movie. And and as for the trailer itself, um, again, I think the trailer looked pretty. It was fun. It was. It, it got me interested. You know, it starts off where uh, you see they're on the. Uh, was it the not not sword? It was the. Uh, was it the sword? No, no, no. It was. Uh, oh man, what's the other one? You know what I'm talking about with the. Uh, the, the the man why all of a sudden i can't think of uh the one that was in the space it wasn't ah it's not shield it's not sword it was oh man i can't remember saber saber no so, ah man what you know what i'm talking about but they're there on the on the space station and you see you know you see captain marvel she's out there oh i'm sorry you see Monica Rambeau, and she's out there, and she's going up to this little force field, and she gets, you know, you see at that time, you know, she ends up switching places with, with uh, Kamala. Kamala goes up, and she's like, oh, Nick Fury, oh, this is Avengers stuff. It's like, it's kind of funny, right? Like, like ah. You know, but then, you know, then we get, we see the family and all just kind of everything playing out, you know, kind of like we've seen in the Ms. Marvel show, just some of that stuff. And the show, and just basically the trailer itself looked fun. They are obviously playing on some of the newer um, things that have happened in the comics, uh, with uh, as far as like Carol Danvers and things that have happened uh, from that aspect. And um, I mean, the, 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 it, altogether, I thought the trailer looked pretty good. I'm interested to see it. Now, if you've paid attention to me, whether it be on Twitter or even uh, here on the channel, I've said several times that I have been um, oddly fascinated with this movie. And I very am uh, interested to see what this movie could be. I think this movie does have potential to be a really good movie. Now, I say that based on this uh, little two-minute trailer that we just got today, n also knowing that they are supposedly going through and pretty much reshooting most of the movie at this point, which, from the things that we've kind of heard about it, it's probably a good thing. Now, the other reason I have, uh, the, so I get, I get sort of confidence that they might actually do Something good in this movie is because everything that's happened here through Phase 4 of the MCU, how they're trying to punch it up, how they're reshooting most of the movie from some of the stuff we heard. Um, 
and they're trying to, I, I would say, steer the ship in the right direction, I think they might be pointing in the right direction. Is this movie going to be it? I mean, I wouldn't say it's going to be the movie that's going to save the MCU and turn things around. Absolutely not. I don't think Guardians of the Galaxy is going to do that. As a matter of fact, I probably think that Guardians of the Galaxy, while it might actually be better than most of the movies that come out in Phase 4 um, and um, certainly Phase 5 so far, I think that it's it's not going to do anything to really change the direction for the MCU and steer them in the right direction just I don't, like I don't think the Marvels is. But I do think that by the time we get through Guardians, which is a movie that I think could be good and entertaining, um, I think if they get this movie right, they could both be those steps to start making things and turning things back in the right direction that they need to be going in. Now, whether they can actually do that remains to be seen. I'm very skeptical, but just judging by this trailer, I think this trailer looks better than what we got out of the Guardians of the Galaxy. It looks better and more hyped than what we got out of Quantumania. Definitely better than uh, that trash Wakanda Forever. Better than Love and Thunder. Doctor Strange. Ah, like I don't I'm not sure that Doctor Strange is one that I'd be hyped for other than the fact that like it's just a different tone of movie altogether that the hype would be different and I can't it's really hard to compare you know what I mean but like this I, I think this is the kind of movie that has the potential to do uh, something good and exciting uh, for not only this franchise maybe reinvigorate some fans but also for the franchise the MCU altogether is it gonna do it yeah like I said I'm skeptical this trailer gives me a little bit of hope that it could be good though but let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Feel free to beat me up. Talk trash, whatever you need to, down there in the comments below. Thank you all so much for being here. You all have a very good day, and we'll see you in the next video. Later.